And I... somebody didn't make show notes? Yeah, Patrick. I have show notes in my head, didn't I already mention this? <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, welcome to Vassals of Kingsway's Linear Reread. Um, this is the next episode in the series, but uh, this is not actually going to be a reread episode because we're not going to be covering any chapters, we're just going to take a look back at the first two books in the series uh, because we covered the last Clash of Kings chapter in the last episode. Joining me today are Hannah. Oh, hey, it's uh, Shadow Baby. Uh, Tanya. Hi, this is Tanya Silence on the forums. Uh, Jock. Hi, this is Jock. Uh, Patrick. Greetings, Patrick the Toll on the forums. And Mary. Hi, it's Mary and uh, Nymeria on the forums. Okay, and this episode is going to be full of spoilers from the Song of Ice and Fire series. So, if you haven't read the books, you shouldn't be here at all. Go away, um, filthy casual. <laughs> Patrick hates you. <laughs> it also okay, may so contain so spoilers for the French elections. Yeah. <laughs> and Brexit. And, and Tanya's <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Don't tell my boyfriend, he doesn't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what have you guys thought of our linear reading because it's definitely different from the order in which the chapters are in the books. Do, you, do any of you, if you think that it has made a difference in the reread in how we read the book? I think it does. There's a few put things. Things yeah. in perspective. Sorry, it does put things in perspective in some in some ways, and it's it's and I wasn't. There were some of the time frames that I just really wasn't clear about because I didn't think about this at all when I when I first read the books. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that's quite interesting to see how 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 um, some of those things are uh, uh, spaced temporally and 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 how they relate to each other. But overall, I don't know. I mean, I think it'll it'll, it'll get more. It'll have more of an effect later on. But overall, I feel like it hasn't had a massive effect. As in, I still I would have, yeah yeah I agree with you. It's like the as we get toward the end of clash and now we're starting storm of swords and everyone's so far spread out i think it makes more of a difference yeah to s see where okay this happened and everything but like for game of thrones i don't think so yeah for game much. of thrones the order wasn't that different anyway patrick you wanted to say yeah something? yeah i guess there's a few storylines that i think gets affected by it and and therefore kind of changes my opinion i mean Especially Clash of Kings, uh, we have the whole situation between, you know, uh, Catelyn moving down and, and talking to the Baratheons and whatever, and and the whole battle report between what what uh, Rob is doing and and what Catelyn's doing and and what how much they know and stuff like that. I like that. That it feels it feels like I've I've actually I don't know uh, understood why why things are as fucked up as they are <laughs> essentially better. There's also the uh, the the thing with, uh, with with when Tyrion he prepares for the uh, the everything in like the siege of King's Landing. I also think that it it puts a lot more weight on what happened. What's happening there when it's in the right order with with everything Catelyn does and and the movement of of Stannis. So I I, I there's a few things I enjoy, but especially it's, yeah, as you said, it's especially in in Clash of Kings that it's uh, apparent. It actually made one thing stand out to me was how isolated Danny's storyline is from the rest of the books. Yeah, um, especially. Even though in Game of Thrones you don't really notice a difference in the in the order of the chapters, except when it comes to Danny's chapter, their their uh, chapters, they they're all kind of like clumped together in one place chronologically. But when but in the book 
they're kind of like sprinkled throughout the book, right? Because they're not really related to the events that are happening over the place. So you can just like put them in anywhere. But when you look at her at her story, I, uh, uh, you know, when you separate it away from the others, it's kind of like happening in a completely different uh, uh, different timeline as you know compared to what it is. Yeah, I completely agree, Nadia. Um, I, that's what I thought too about uh, the Danny time timeline, and um, it's it's for her that it's mostly uh, it's the most uh, striking uh, um, impact. I also think it's uh, the linear Riri just uh, yeah puts things in perspective as to when uh, are all of the big things happening. So that you can actually uh, see that the timeline is really, um, I mean, a lot of things are happening at the same time and then there's nothing for a while. And it's uh, it's interesting to to actually pay attention to to when all of this is happening. Um, but I don't, I mean, I'm having a hard time figuring out if it really changes a lot of things for me because just for the fact that we're not reading it at the same speed that we would uh, actually read the book. I mean, um, I just have the feeling that I'm reading a few chapters every every few weeks for, for the rereads, but uh, maybe doing this actual linear reread uh, all at once, or just like you would like the way you would read a book uh, normally, uh, we would maybe uh, feel the difference more. Yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna have to ask Marie. Don't you don't you read the reread the chapters several times a week? I mean, <laughs> Before I mean, I, mean, I know, I know, I know, day, I do. Every day. Yeah, every day, I mean, every day, every minute. Do you mean in preparation for the podcast? No, no, you? just because this is just <laughs> like some people read the Bible. I I read this. Okay, so just <laughs> step off the front read soon, Okay. <laughs> so you're saying this is like the Bible? Um, the one yeah, that that's, the, that's the second... Con yeah, go ahead, Nadia. Yeah, I was just saying there was another thing that we noticed when we were doing, as we were doing the reread. Every, in every episode, we would notice that like, you know, in three or four chapters that, you know, are kind of like next to each other, there's a certain theme that's going on in those chapters, but when you look at it in the books, when they're in a different order, it's not that noticeable. Um, the thing that I remember most clearly is when I think there were like three chapters. One was, I think, Tyrion and one was Danny and one was something else. And they were all like talking about how maybe there was something magical happening. That maybe the dragons had come back or something like that. And it was happening, happening in like three different chapters which were happening at pretty much the same time. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah, not something it's, you notice like, when you're reading the book. Like, right, it's like right at the beginning, well, for us in our, our linear reread, the beginnings of uh, Clash of Kings, because yeah, we had, like, chapter... seven where they're all talking about the comet and the dragons, and then they just, like, stop. And I, I was just thinking about this the other day, um... I was like, yeah, you know, that whole comp thing kind of fizzled out, but I remembered it being like a thing through the whole book. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, yeah, it's the way we're reading it right now. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I wonder, do we know anything? Has has Martin said anything about how he, how he tends to write the chapters? Do we know if he wrote them maybe closer yeah. to the order we're reading them now or what, what's going on? Because yeah, he doesn't, he presumably doesn't write they... them in the order they're in the books necessarily. No, 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 definitely not. He, he did talk about him writing characters uh, through, through periods, through periods of their like, like mm -hmm. whole storylines, uh, oh, okay. and then okay. then 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 sometimes going back and changing stuff. And if he feels that something is relevant for another character, he might also wait, like elaborate on that. So it's kind of, yeah, it is if obvious from when you read it in a linear reread that it's essentially <laughs> it's it's not a coincidence that some things are uh, connected in that sense because that might be a thing that he's actually been thinking about. Uh, oh, but then maybe that like, is a bit surprising, though, if he doesn't write chapter that happen at a similar time, at a similar time. 
Yeah, well, sometimes. I mean, it depends. He just says that mm. whatever comes natural, but usually he tends to, like, write whatever he can on one character as much mm. as he, as possible so it does, that he doesn't lose his thread. But I think I definitely think that he also looks at the other characters uh, when he then, uh, if they if if they are experience something similar or maybe if they're at the same place at the same time, I do think that he he references the other characters. I mean that would be mm-hmm. a wise choice at least. Uh, but he definitely said that he he's he tends to focus on a character at the t- at a time. Okay. I think it gets really interesting when you have, like, the Sansa Tyrion chapters, because they're in the same place. And, like, on my first read-through, I it was a little frustrating for me, you know, towards the end of Clash, when you get into, like, the Battle of Blackwater, because we are skipping around, but you could tell by reading it, okay, well, shouldn't that have been, like one Sansa chapter and then another Sansa chapter right away. And in our reread now, you get that. But it's really interesting to see with two characters that are in close proximity how their chapters come down when it's in the linear order. And I think, like, especially when we get into Feast Dance, it'll start getting really crazy with so many characters will be together you know yeah it's gonna be weird yeah it'll be hard having to carry around two books instead of one everywhere i go i think that'll start with storm of swords because you're suddenly getting like cersei and jamie in the mix too and then brienne comes in and then you know yeah so we'll probably start seeing more of you know yeah We we should definitely do like a a a Bible recit- recitation uh, uh, style uh, podcast where every like, night where everybody everybody should turn to the Book of Daenerys uh, verse five uh, chapter three yeah it's like that line whatever uh, oh, and it, it it was it was set on the day okay. where are my dragons <laughs> <laughs> and everybody face palmed well that can be your next project. <laughs> oh my What's up, God. everyone? I, I totally want that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt. Hello. Hey. Matt. Uh, Matt, do you yes. have any opinions about how this linear reread has affected how you read the books? How the storylines work together when they're in a different order? Especially Danny's, because it's like kind of a standalone story. Yeah, you know... It, I, I don't know how he came up with the order because I mean I think sometimes it's Reddit almost deliberate that like the order. It's... what's that? Reddit came up with the order. Oh, like what? What do you mean? Do you mean the order? That no, I don't. Happened? I don't like how George came up with the oh. order because it seems like oh, yeah, deliberate. Question. Like you know, like when you think Bran's dead and then all of a sudden like Bran is the last chapter. Um, you know that's just for suspense, but you know it seems like there are a couple parts I've noticed in this linear reread that chapters that are basically back to back are way far apart, like in the actual reading order. Mm. Um, also this reread has been going on for so long. I was, uh, listening to like, uh, I think radio Westeros or, or something. And I was like, I should really reread these books again. I was like, wait a minute. I already am, but we're doing the linear reread. <laughs> it's just taking so, yeah, well, I mean, can, can, I like it. It's fun. You could do both, you know. You can reread it on your own and in linearly, right? Yeah, but then my brain will melt and. Yeah, I feel come like that takes away and... from the whole point of reading them in a specific order, right? Because then you're... But you guys are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh, you just, do, you just do a linear reread one day of the no. entire series, and then you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, ha- I have to. Have to be slow because otherwise we'll be done with the reread and Winds of Winter still won't be out and then we'll have to do another reread and yeah. then it will uh, never end. Uh, Nadia, don't say well, that. Well, then we do the original It'll order again and compare year. how how it's different. Um, um, another thing is I, I maybe George is waiting for us. That's possible. <laughs> so let's hurry up. Yeah, what um, if that's the case? <laughs> to to me, I also I also find 
I find it more immersive to read it that way. So I'm also I'm a bit I've always been a bit weird about about reading books. So like for me the the real time Lord of the Rings review we're doing is the best thing ever because I always hated reading stories that happen over a large time frame in a very short period of time. And I'd sometimes read multiple books at, like in parallel, so I'd spread them out to get a sense of time passing. And 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 I also feel like reading them in in uh, in linear order makes it a bit more real and more tangible. So to me, it feels more immersive to read the books this way, and I'm enjoying it more. I don't think it would be good for a first read, but overall, I think. As a reread, I'm enjoying this a lot more because it feels much more immersive to me. I will tell you something I, I do enjoy. I though. think the sense that I like knowing where everyone is at a certain moment. Yeah. Like yeah the I control like freak in me. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where everyone is, what everyone is doing. I, I, I just I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I will, that. yeah I, I will tell you something I do enjoy. I mean... I, I think that we we can have a, a a larger appreciation of what John is doing because now it's everything is like oh, oh. so much better, right? Uh, he's I think like, you have to spell out J O N when Tanya's on the call. <laughs> no, I think I think Patrick is saying that just to upset Tanya. So he might you? Oh, say Patrick John. would never do that. Wait, what? No, I can never. I could never try. I would never try to upset Tanya. Of course. Not. I would, I would, I would do it without even thinking about it, usually. Sure. <laughs> so I no, think but... uh, one thing that I'm picking up with the linear reread uh, as well is the, like, dropping of hints that George does becomes much more apparent. Like, Oh, yeah. When you get, like, subsequent chapters and, like, you know, you hear something in the background about, like, you know, something stupid like a ship, like the cinnamon wind or something like that is, was said to be there. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. That's the same ship as like two chapters ago because you read it two chapters ago and not like half a book ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but again, that raises the question of how, how does he write the chapters for one thing and how... Uh, does it decide on, on, on the order? Because yeah. I think that for a few of the things we've been um, noticing, like when we see a, a theme like like uh, you were saying um, in in one specific uh, linear reread episode, uh, and we see something similar between the chapters, I I think maybe sometimes we're reading it. Uh, I mean, we're reading much more into it than there actually is because. It seems to be. It seems to me that it could be a coincidence, um, and obviously for other things like the the comet, it's uh, it's uh, it's clearly uh, on purpose. Obviously that yeah, think... they all talk of the comet at the same time. But yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. How does it choose that order and not something else? It's uh, it's not always clear. I think you're right about the themes. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes yes. we find themes that aren't necessarily there. But if you try really hard, you can come up with ways to connect chapters. But then obviously <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we do, right? Yeah. We well. squint our eyes and kind of tilt our head and we what? come up with no. new ideas. Hmm. <laughs> we never that's, no, that that shade of blue, that them. must mean something, right? That, remem that reminds me when back in school we read, um, we read a book and we had to uh, go through the entire book and write down every instance where the author says that there's cracks in the wall and then we had to analyze what all crack all mentions of cracks in the wall in the entire book mean what book was it um is it called maybe it's called the, the chess the novella crack in, the wall. In, in english i don't know schach novelle by stefan zweig german book german oh. uh. it's really good everyone should read it but you shouldn't go through it and analyze every single crack in the wall because um <laughs> Uh, oh, the does, royal does, game, that, does that beget? Called. Does that beget a uh, crackpot theories? <laughs> I think that's where they come from. <laughs> so, um, the, the... But, um, yeah, yeah. you are. Some, no but I think that's kind that. of what we're doing sometimes. And I complained a lot about that when I was in school. 
but... with some things though i feel like the linear reads actually detracting like going back to the red comet thing i i kept remembering it as being like a much bigger deal yeah. when i read it the first time and then when we did the linear read i was like well that was over really quickly yeah, it's actually me quite brief. A minute to, yeah, it took me to remember a minute to remember, like, oh, oh no, it's just because we're doing all this shit out of order. Because I was like, didn't that last for the whole book? And it was like a big thing forever. But then mm. I realized, like, oh no, it, it and it makes sense because it shouldn't have been there over like months and months and months, right? Mm. Like even when we get what is it, um, Haley's comet, or like when the Hailbot comment was around that only was for 10 days or so oh yeah we talked about well, we talked worldwide about that, we on that episode <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so it, it makes sense time, but yeah. but yeah, yeah. kind of it detracted from uh well i guess not detracted but i just remember it as being more important the first time and i was kind of focusing on it and looking for deeper meaning and then with this it was so brisk that i was able to focus on other things and my attention was pulled elsewhere yeah i think i mean i'd i'd have to say i'd have to say that there's clearly a reason the chapters are in the order they're in i mean i don't know if every single ordering necessarily is, uh, is that important but overall that like martin clearly put thought into how we ordered the chapters and mm-hmm. and and I think overall it probably works much better than reading them linearly. But but I I don't know. It's it's just very different ways of reading it. Um, but I think obviously right. we I lose think... some things that were intentionally put there. I think his original order like enhances the suspension t- uh, character tensions yeah. obviously mm-hmm. just because you don't get something resolved immediately. Sometimes it takes you know four. <laughs> sometimes you have to go to like three different places before you come back and get you know an issue resolved or yeah yeah and some some things that really matter a lot and kind of draw out over several chapters just happen really quickly because because they just don't take much time so yeah yeah he is a suspense yeah, writer is, yeah which is why you wouldn't want to do this you wouldn't want to read this way the first time around right this is no purely for TV. yeah no, you want to read it as canon right yeah exactly. yeah yeah, I mean, I, wouldn't, I, w- I, yeah, I think this is a fantastic way of reading it, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone the first time. So. Yeah, but, exactly. but as a social experiment, um, maybe we should do it. Like, uh, experiment on some of our, one of our friends and, and make no. them read it in that, system, that way. I mean, I like, like the guy that taught his, his son, uh, um, you know, playing on, yeah. Well, it, it's an interesting point. Patrick, how, I mean, you were teasing Mary earlier, but, you know, about not reading it, like, all the way through and just taking it, like, a chunk at a time for each episode. I would, I, I have wondered, like, what would happen if I took a Game of Thrones and Clash and read them in this order all at once? And would that be different? Because right now I am just taking it our episodes at a time whatever is covered and it's great for analysis and to be able to discuss them but it's not fluid either like the published order is or if you just sat and read it yeah it's not good for uh, immersion i think to yeah. read it so slowly so for me, it's for hard me, to for say me it really is but i feel differently about this because i'm weird so i feel more immersed <laughs> if i take time, time i did it. that i went back and i read a game of thrones like before i started podcasting with you guys but i just read danny like through it and mm-hmm. i had intended to like just read each character all the way through, yeah, but then I started. We can doing do that. We can guys. do that. I mean, we've got like twenty-five thousand years before the next book comes out, so that can be our next project. When we finish don't the say re-read. that. Don't say that. Sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Some people say it's not going to come out. So. Yeah. No, I would. I think Wins will be out. Out. Like, I have. I still am holding out for this year, but uh, definitely between Wins and A Dream of Spring, we'll have lots of time. Yeah. So then we can do. The, <laughs> we can do the reread. Well, so so far as like first timers doing it literally, like I, I don't think that's 
that's right. Like I, I get yeah. like anxious enough, like just getting people like, if you like the show, you're going to love the fucking books and then hope that they love the fucking books. <laughs> But it's right. just like bored super nerds like us that would go. Let's read what? it literally. Let's read it by character. Oh, let's read it by. Yeah. Let's read it backwards. Like, but but from an <laughs> academic perspective, <laughs> from an academic, <laughs> really scientific perspective, perspective, right? It would be interesting to see. Yeah, to absolutely. find out what the yeah. result is. Um, yeah, but why, how, how could you ethically subject someone to that? You though? would never get ethics approval for the study. Well, I, I, I don't mean, care. There's no control. I could right? maybe convince yeah. my husband to do it because he definitely doesn't do it, give do any fucks. Do it. do it. So I wouldn't like ruin it for him, but do it. I'd have to talk him into it. Do it. I'll talk to him about it later. Fantastic. Yeah, when you we were reading Blackwater, uh, the first time that I read the books, I was kind of like just rushing through the books, and I was I just wanted to know where the story was going. Like mm-hmm. when the battle was happening, I just wanted to know where you know who is going to win at the end but yeah. and then even the, the next time i read it it's sort of like there's a chapter that's happening in the middle of the battle and then there's another chapter and then it goes back to the battle and then you know and it kind and it kind of like it kind of jumps between locations but when you're doing the linear reread it kind of like specifically with the black water it kind of stays just there in king's landing right it does switch between characters but n- but it stays in the same in the same place, right? And that kind of helped me figure out how what everyone's strategy was, how they were, you know, so was kind of planning to win the battle and everything. And it kind of just worked itself out in my head, which is helpful if you, you know, you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but if you're just a casual reader, then I guess this isn't, isn't for you. Hey, so you wanna... can I bring up a topic? Yeah. So just the uh, popularity with the, of the linear reread and how many people it's kind of drawn into the forums and to podcasting with us and stuff like that. Is that the linear reread or is it just that we started putting videos on YouTube? If we'd put other stuff on YouTube, would people also have started listening to it? I'm pretty sure like the reread's the most popular YouTube anyway, but... Okay. Yeah, so no, we do have other stuff. Me. I think yeah, it's we different. Have I mean, stuff on there. like I think we uh, the reread is definitely the biggest like thing, the biggest series we have on there. Um, mm. A lot of it, a lot of the episodes don't actually get put up on YouTube because there's copyright issues. Oh right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or there's extra work because they like throw in music or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, somebody has to take all of the copyrighted stuff out and then put something else instead. So, which is a lot of work. And like the full castles, uh, they can only put the discussion at the end on there. Yeah. I think the the theory episodes are uh, have like a lot of views because just that's a lot how of I found you guys. That. Oh, okay. The which one? I found you guys. I the found you guys through the you theories. Like theories, random theories. Yeah, about theories of ice and fire. Oh, oh. That's how I found I it, and then I listened to all of the feast dance, <laughs> and then I joined on the forums. Yay! Yeah, mm. I think the uh, the first theories of ice and fire has like I don't know sixty, seventy thousand views or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Wow mind-blowing but yeah we yeah. have had a lot of people who joined simply because of the linear reread i think casey mm. started listening to that and she joined in mm. and i don't know a lot as of far people as I recall, coming... the question was especially what what do we think about uh like the, the the podcast being so popular now because of the reread right yeah, I don't think it, I don't yeah. think I answered for example. So, um. <laughs> for example, <laughs> just like randomly well, picking an example. Here. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm guessing I just it's the point that we sort of sometimes get into is that it's weird that there is a new guard of people that that actually know the the podcast from the YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, that, well, I at least uh, found found you guys through uh, the Song of Ice and Fire podcast, or podcast of Ice yep. and Fire. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, to me it's still weird so, that there's people who didn't come through the podcast of Ice and Fire. Or like that people yeah, are listening to this right now who've, pro- who've maybe never listened to the podcast of Ice and Fire. Is it annoying, yeah, they... guys? Huh? Like, you can cut this yeah, out. Yeah, super annoying. Does it you hate you? everyone. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that you hate them, I think, but... I hate Casey. No, I, I love think Casey. That, that a lot of the a lot of the <laughs> running jokes and stuff and the and the weird crackpot theories, most of them come from Podcast of Ice and Fire. And somebody who's coming in from YouTube and stuff, they don't really like they haven't heard of those before and they you know, and usually they don't even know about the hosts that are involved with Podcast of Ice and Fire. Yeah. So it gets kind of like yeah, or that, like, yeah. Mimi pays so we can do the stupid POK thing, you know? That's yeah, true. exactly, and Amin's the one who's basically running the forums, right? And most people don't, when they come in, they don't really know him. Mm. Right. Sure, yeah, that's yeah. sad, I guess. But but generally, it, doesn't, it think... doesn't, doesn't bother me that much in general, um, as long as people are keen to participate. And I really think the format of, of VOK is the best thing ever that anyone can just participate, right? So, so I'm just excited yeah. about people joining. But... But it is a bit, it is a bit sad if they don't really know where it's coming from. Yeah. Well, like oh, I, I have listened to, you know, the podcast proper. I just tend to feel more engaged with VOK because Patrick, there are so <laughs> many, there's, there's more. Like before, I actually signed up and was on one. You guys were all like kind of characters, if you will, you know, like on a TV show. So it's yeah. a big ensemble kind of thing where, but I felt more... you know, maybe I don't tend to agree with one person as much or I really like somebody else's sense of humor. And there's just a big spectrum of people that can engage me, you know, so it's a little more entertaining that way. Oh, I guess I didn't... And then... I didn't... Sorry. The other thing is, like, it, um, a lot of what I would go back and that's been running so long. So I do feel really detached. And, like, that's more far away, if that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely does. I just think that's a very different experience for me because I started listening to the podcast of Ice and Fire when it was really early on and they went through different hosts. So for me, it's not just. It's not just the hosts that are on it at the moment. Like I, I, I knew all the other ones when they were like in in the periods that they were on the podcast. Yeah. Um, like Apocalypse yeah. Day. I still remember Ashley Ashley too. And... Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and what I and what I. And the guy who the guy who had a tree fall. Oh yeah, Ben. 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 Yes. <laughs> um. I mean, and I started I... listening. I started listening to them from like episode one. Obviously, yeah. I didn't start listening when they were on episode one. No, but, but I started I went at back. episode one because there were few enough yeah. that it seemed sensible to do that. But then I also do that exactly. in general with other podcasts, exactly. even if there's like 5,000 episodes. Yeah, and I think the first yeah. few podcasts were like hilarious because they didn't yeah. have like a directed discussion. It was just, I don't know, it was very funny. I think they were more like us in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's never evolved. So the next thing we're going to talk about is. <laughs> so now that we have finished Clash of Kings, uh, is, it, is it Clash of King, King, King? Yeah, right? I sometimes get confused. Now that we finished, now that we finished Clash of Kings, where do you think um, there's obviously going to be some drastic changes in the circumstances of certain characters, especially like Tyrion? Um, he he was kind of like top of the food chain, and now his father is back, and he's kind of like in pretty dire circumstances right now and then Sansa's story basically continues from where it was but um Arya's chain, uh, changes quite a lot uh, Bran's story changes obviously um you know a lot of that is happening right now and it's, uh, we've just been through the battle of the black water and we're going to see the consequences of that in the beginning of storm of swords um just <sighs> anyone have anything Dude. to say you know about what we've seen in Clash of Kings recently. Well, like, think about, like, all the new cool characters that we meet. We, like, we're going to meet Marjorie. We're going to meet the uh, Queen of Thorns. Uh, who else? We meet Davos and Stannis. Well, we've already the met first them. Time. But, like, no, in Swords, right? not in not. the Game of Thrones. Well, in Clash of Kings. Well, no, Clash of Kings. 
saw them in the beginning of Clash of Kings. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like beginning of Storm of Swords. Um, oh, I see. And- Jamie. Yeah, we, we can, can see it from his perspective. Get into, we get into Jamie's head, right? Yeah, he's yeah. the first chapter after the prologue. Right? Yeah, yeah I think and so. First, we find out uh, how crazy she really is. Cersei, does she, does she awesome. arrive be, before Feast, though? No. No, it's feast. no she is Feast. Yeah. Oh, okay. She's, she's, like, she's like, like the first that. chapter after Feast. The prologue and feast, I think. Too. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the end of the of uh, storm where uh, Tyrion fucks everyone over. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but- it's like the first chapter, and she's going to see Tywin in his murder pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the dream. So- in Storm of Swords, we get the red wedding. We get the purple wedding. Mountain and the Viper. Good yeah, times. we get a lot of stuff about. I mean, yeah. oh yeah, Oberon. <laughs> oh my God, Oberon. <laughs> yeah, oh that and, and 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 the Iron Islands. Uh, so, <laughs> Victorian. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's coming. The Kraken is coming. <laughs> Victorian is also in Feast for Crows, right? Uh, yeah, he but comes Gary first there, but but yeah. but yeah, from his perspective, yeah. But we we yeah. hear about him before that. Right. So so his his character is is introduced in Storm. We don't get a Barristan chapter until like Feast Dance, right? Uh, yeah. I'd say yeah, yeah. We get we get Aaron when Theon gets to the island. That's when he first meets him, and mm-hmm. Aaron's a dick to him anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just really brief, though. Uh, well, and we meet um, Balon r- real quick before he's mm. falls he's off the bridge, and he's a dick. We don't get it, but a lot of the POVs from the from the new characters actually don't come in until Feast. So yeah. So, so like yeah, Aaron, Victorian, those guys, the crew, they don't. Uh, well, and we. We meet Brienne in Clash, but we get to know her m- a-, a lot more in Storm of Swords. Yeah, that's true. Oh, Jamie. yeah. We see so much of her Storm of Swords. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I was just thinking that Danny's storyline, like, her, Sucks. she has just been through the house. <laughs> She's, <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, she was just, she just went through the House of, uh, house of the Undying. And it kind of changes her mindset. Like, she hears all these prophecies, and she hears how she's going to be betrayed. And then she sort of starts obsessing with it. Like, all of the time she's thinking, you know, who's going to betray me next? Who's going to betray me next? Whereas before, she's kind of a she's kind of a more trusting character. But then suddenly, because of this, because of these prophecies, she, she does change a lot. And we see that, you know, kind of like throughout yeah. the books. But isn't that the same thing that happened with her father? Like the the what are, what was it uh, Barrowtown or whatever or, or wherever he got kidnapped and then he yeah. got uh, buried Duskendale? and just Duskendale I didn't know and then uh, and then uh, yeah the defiance of Duskendale. So then he got buried and he just got more and more paranoid as he's learning about like all these other people like maybe making machinations to take over his power. So. Hmm. I see her kind of going through that a little bit. Yeah, yeah but she's, let's, let's she's like a, someone who's got like a parent with like Alzheimer's or schizophrenia, and you know you're worried about it like passing on very to different kid diseases. or like becoming. No, I'm just saying like some kind of mental disorder, right? Or even addiction. If you grow up in a really chaotic home, not like she grew up in his house, but she knows that history and she is always watching for it. And she compares herself a lot of the time. Like, am I going to be like my father? Am I going to be like my brother? And she's very she wary of really, that history. The thing is, she doesn't really understand what her father was like because she doesn't, she didn't know him. She only knows what Viserys has told her and God knows what he's told her. Um, and I, I don't think it's until Barristan kind of starts telling her about her family that she realizes what her father was truly like. Mm. Uh, maybe. I, I, mean, I, think, 
I think that you you're right in a sense, but I think what what Hannah's point was that that from a, a superficial perspective, as a reader or someone who who knows a family that has this these problems, you might also wonder if it's not congenital, but yeah, it would be something that you talk about or you think about even gl glancingly that it could happen to the person that's related to them because maybe it runs in the family. So so when we see stuff like this, it kind of also could worry a person that that uh, that sees a pattern maybe from between yeah. the two. Uh, well, so, like so part, yeah. It, it seems like it really informs a lot of like the way she conducts herself, but Nadia, you're right. Like it, it does begin to get mashed up with all the prophecies that she hears. And then she starts to get a lot more and more obsessed with that and is looking for things around corners, mm. you know, a lot more. And it does affect the way that she conducts herself. Do you think that it has some yeah, sort dude. of self-fulfilling prophecy effect where maybe some mm. prophecies will only come true because she's looking for them? Absolutely. Yeah, like the Cersei thing. Yeah. Like the Cersei thing. Yeah. yeah. That's, one, so that's my favorite that... kind of prophecy, though. The self-fulfilling one. Self-fulfilling? Yeah, because they're so... You know, it's because it's so ironic. It's, uh, like, it's yeah, it, it's the best kind of story element that the one... But it's, it's overused, but it's still the best story element, in my opinion. Because it, it's so ironic and tragic. It's usually tragic yeah. as well. Well, and it gives you a, a place as the reader to be like, well, like watching a horror movie, don't go in there. You know what I mean? Because you obviously can see and have a different perspective than the character. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with her mental state, and okay, so we're theorizing that like she's getting more and more paranoid when she hears these prophecies. With that being said, like I always took it that it was Quaith as using shadow magic, whatever that she is. But do you think she might just be hallucinating that just had more paranoia and more prophecy, like to go back, you must go forward, whatever? Mm. Oh, you think she's hallucinating Quaith? Well, no, because Jorah yeah, can see Quaith. No, Does but like he? when she's on. I thought when she was the only one who was. And uh, when she's in Marine in the pyramid, she sees Quaith twice. Mm. And obviously. Like, she meets the actual person, Quaith, but then I think that she hallucinates um, when she's not there. It's a, no, it's I... a possibility. We talked about this uh, on oh. the last podcast. It's not out yet, but it's definitely a possibility. But, uh, yeah. Was that I don't the know. Unsullied? Was the last one you covered? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. The acquisition of the, the army. Acquisition. Danny stealing them. Uh, she acquired them through legal means. Check the rules. That wasn't. That wasn't the deal. It, it was. She. They just. She gave him the, the dragon. Things. It's not her fault yeah, that he humbly got burned up. That's true. I'd agree with that. Oh come on. There has to be some. Matt, if I sell you a car, and then you we have to die in a car crash. This, why can I not take the car back with me? You're not using it. <laughs> the bylaws Try it of the and see what happens. of Massachusetts. Yeah, I think we should transfer an experiment um, to verify. Yeah. So somehow, Targaryen logic and Viking logic are very similar in some ways. It's it's weird. I I like it. That's why I want to know. <laughs> I think it's more about dragon you it, want to. I mean, like, that dude could have never owned Drogon. That's true. No. I mean, well, the problem is he didn't have his lawyer drop, like, a bill of sale <laughs> or a title to the dragon. If, they, if he had legal <laughs> ownership of the dragon, then he could have some recourse. Yeah, but, you know. But he didn't really have the time to do that, though. I mean, it, it went over pretty quickly. I mean,. The other thing yeah, is he's kind of stupid. Yeah. I would have assumed she could speak the language or at least had an inkling of it. Even if you're a foreigner, 
if you spent any <laughs> amount of time in a country immersed in their language, you should be able to at least pick up some of it. He just assumes that she can't understand. She never says that she needs the translator. Because he's the kind of right. arrogant person I mean, who wouldn't pick up languages. What, what, what about his Sorry. Hmm? Yeah, but to be fair, uh, that doesn't factor in on, on the uh, yeah the whole deal thing. It's, it's not doesn't affect the legal uh, rights of him as a buyer well, that stupid. he assumes that she's stu- more stupid than she is. Uh, I would say that right. The, the 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 linchpin of this of the of this deal is essentially that uh, the dragon is not to be owned it's ch- it chooses its rider so uh, so that uh, when they buy something on the assumption uh, that that they can own it then they are essentially making a deal without knowing the the complete story about us uh, the the product that they seek to buy. It's so, like magical wands well, changing than Harry Potter. Like, you know, there's a lot of, like, nuance. Like, the wand has to choose the wizard, but then if the wizard's beaten, like, maybe the wand's allegiance will be to the wizard that beat him. You know, it's a whole thing. It's too complicated. Yeah, they should, ju- they should just have a wizard battle, Daenerys and, and that and that slave owner. That was so See, well, The wins. thing is, money is, is like, they, they had a verbal contract, right? So let's assume that a verbal contract is binding, um, there is no stipulation in the contract that once she gives him the dragon, if any harm befalls him, she can't then reclaim the dragon as her property. But but it isn't her property. That's the thing. She always she already she said it in that chapter. She does not yeah. own the dragon. She's just, she just George. says the dragon. Yeah, she, he just she just says to 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 Drogon, burn them. And and the, and he does because he likes her, but uh, well, that's his decision, but other than that, it? she does not. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're friends, not not uh, <laughs> owner. Uh, yeah, I mean, equal owner object. <laughs> Can we discuss where John's storyline is going? I'm gonna hang up for a while. <laughs> Go pour yourself okay. a drink. Yeah. Step away from the mic for a second. You know what is good about the John chapters, though, Nothing. is not not necessarily <laughs> him, but it's all the people around him. Like, oh, I dude, really the enjoy when he great. meets. Yeah, okay. I okay. Re- well, I really enjoy when he meets Mance. You know, like I really do like Mance Raider's character a lot. And Tormund, and, come on. Tormund. and Tormund, yeah, you know. Yeah, fair enough. I'm, I think Mance was boring, but but Tormund, yeah, and and uh, Corin Halfhand was also. I mean, uh, it, it got got through the idea that that the people who who's lived lived for a long while that they 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 know that they're living on borrowed time. The older they get, the the closer they are to the deaths, essentially. Yeah. So I like that idea that they, they he was just like, well, we need to do this. I'm gonna die anyway soon, so. Why not also, now? Also, I'm 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 really upset that like someone who like maybe watched the show before reading the books, like the show really butchered Mance and Corrin Halfhand's characters. Yeah. Yeah. They've done okay with Tormund, like he still has the same kind of humor and shit like that. But like Mance and Corrin are so fucking badass in the books, and then like Mance because he gives zero fucks. He's sitting there like singing, playing the lute, like. Whatever I could kill you or sing to you, I I, I don't care. It's up to oh, me. Let me just say no show spoilers from the last two seasons, please. What's that? No show spoilers from the last but two seasons, is... please. Mance was introduced. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but agreed, like, but not further than this, please. But I'm just saying, like, but the show really butchered their characters. You know. Yeah. Mm. They, it, I think for time, they just don't have time to go into all of it. Because then there's the whole thing with like. Um, you know, Vimer Six Skins, and uh, yeah. there's the dude that wants to bone Egret. They, like, kind of did him, but not really. Oh, Longspear? The guy with the big dick? Yeah. Well, and I kind of, like, feel bad for that guy in the book, too. Like, he's, he's actually kind of sweet in the book. He's just not pretty. Sure. Would have turned out better for her or for she to listen to him. Couldn't mm. turn out much worse, could it? 
Yeah. Like, what on a serious note, actually, that, uh... sorry, this isn't just me hating on John. No, it's what true. What about that, that uh, hung dead dogs from her, like, spear? From her dog's head? Yeah, her. Like, yeah, she there's, all, there's a bunch of like, characters. Like, yeah. <laughs> They're all crazy. Yeah. 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 And we're just, like, so about the to see all these characters, the because John is... John is just joining up with the Wildlings, so we're going to see all of these characters very soon. We'll be hearing the giant song soon, which is, like, super sad. Oh, yeah. Oh, Last yes. of the Giants? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the last... mm. I just read that chapter not long ago, as a matter of fact. So, and there's like I have a qu- great exchange with, uh, sorry, just uh, where John... Um, is just like, what do you mean the last of the giants? Like, there's fucking giants like walking next to us, and she's just like, you don't know shit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Are you stupid? Yeah. All right, sorry, Patrick. Mm. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking. Well, we right now we're talking about something like, but but essentially, has your your favorite moment in the books been here already, or are you still waiting for them? I mean, I mean, are you just yes, purple wedding, Joffrey dies? Is that the thing, or is it more like uh, what? Yeah, has your favorite moment already been here? I really can't say question. I have no. much of a favorite moment. I, I mean, House of the Undying is fucking epic. Yeah, I really liked when Cat died, and I didn't have chapters. to read her chapters anymore. I really liked yeah, that's a good time too. <laughs> Oh, we got books before that, Tanya. Oh, no. But we'll get them. <laughs> I, like, so. I like Frey Pies, but we're not going to see that until Dawn's of Dragons. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, I think my favorite, my favorite part is that um, speech by, um, what was her name? Winifred Mandeley. Where oh, she, yeah. You know, the one where yeah, that's pretty good. is um, Wyla. Wyman. Yeah. And she gives us the whole speech, you know, where she said, We swore to be their men, stark men. Oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's good. Fantastic. I do think yeah. that my favorite moment has been here. And that was actually last last chapter which we which hasn't come out yet. But yeah, the the acquisition of the dragons. I was as I said then, uh, I was sorta already uh, I, I knew what was going on uh, to a certain extent. I, I knew that she would would pull a fast one on them by, for some somehow, especially when they when they when she started talking about she wanted everything, every single soldier they had. Then I knew that she was she was she was duping them somehow. Uh, so so the moment there when when I felt that my my suspicions my my theories were true, and I was, yeah, that that really, like, was satisfying for me. Uh, and that was so when the book when reaffirmed re- your own ego, you're happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so, no, sort of, sort of like when 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 things have been hinted to, and it it, it actually happens, and it makes sense that it happens. Uh, I I I started enjoying George's writing even more, like uh, like for later on the foreshadowing of the the red wedding i mean i didn't know that that was happening i knew that stuff was happening but i didn't yeah. foresee that at all but i but the the hints were there and and yeah this this one this instance with the acquiring of the dragons was the first time i really knew something was happening and i could see okay this is going to be either really cool or really fucked up and it was kind of both which was, cool, was it, really cool. That's definitely my favorite show moment of the of the whole show. I think that's the best because you don't um, realize in the show that she can speak Valyrian at all. And I had seen that part before I read the books, and I was just like, "Oh shit, game change!" It was really well done. And then when you read the books, it's a little less of a big reveal, but it is a big moment. And she like takes charge more like yeah. ending everything up up until then with her character is just kind of like eh, yeah, or you know gotta go with the flow yeah. yeah 
I think it's a really good assertive moment for, but I think my favorite parts in, in the books is, um, so far, was the House of the Undying. Hmm? It's hard to say, though. So you got to take it like character by character, I think, to say your favorite moment. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure, for me, it's it's heads and shoulders over everything else for me, that specific moment. But, yeah, I guess... Even when uh, the Red Wedding goes down? The Red Wedding is not, like, an enjoyable enjoyable moment yeah, for me. Yeah, I guess that's different kind I of like favorite, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure that it's, it can qualify to be my favorite. I mean, it's it's a very powerful moment, but would it be my favorite if I don't enjoy reading it? <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think so. Maybe... Um, yeah, because because if you want powerful moments that uh, like can affect you a lot, then there's going to be a lot in the upcoming books uh, for different reasons. But I'm just saying the the one where you feel like either most satisfied with how it went went through, or just yeah happy when you look at back at it and you always remember that specific moment because it really made a good impression on you and you really liked it. That's for me. That's that one. Huh. I'd have to think yeah, about really. times I that I really liked something rather than shit went down and it kind of stuck with me, like you know a Craster's Keep kind of moment where you know <laughs> the old bear dies. Like you know, those are things that I remember. And like you know, Red Wedding, obviously Purple Wedding. You're like, yay. Um, hmm. you know. The mountain and the viper, come on. Like Yeah, that's amazing. Silly boy. Silly boy. I just yeah, I I remember thinking about that. Oh my god, you won. Stop doing that. And oh yeah. That yeah. Have, We're gonna get to that have, and that's gonna be horrible. Yeah, oh that's god. just just so frustrating. Have we gotten have, a Sam chapter have, yet? So I don't know. I don't think so. He gets here in. Linear? No, I, uh, we we haven't oh. met him. I mean, but it's from a met point of view, though, right? Yeah, yeah. We 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 met him, but we we. I mean. We didn't meet there. him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> See, I love his his chapters. Like, are some of my favorite. So he must get a POV next chapter, right? Because the prologue is Chet, and you know. They're planning their little coup against the Night's Watch. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. got to be soon. Yeah. Because he's it's only like eight chapters in. He comes in what, like page 237? Well, it's in five episode. Episode 40. Six, that's six. Yeah. So I guess that is a while. Yeah, it is. So... Can we move on to the next thing? Um, yeah. Do we have a next thing? Yeah, Nadia. <laughs> has, uh, in, in, in Nadia's uh, we just, head, head shoulders. In my head, yes, there is a next thing. Just look at them. No, now. we're just getting to like the the fun stuff, which is you know we've come up with a lot of crazy theories in these in this reread. Mm. Um, can any of you think of your favorite one? Yeah, the one I just made. I mean. Uh, uh, this one will be uh, the the Great one others, uh, before actually, will be out. Yeah, but no, but the one before the. Uh, but I enjoy the crackpot theories the most. So for me, it was the uh, I the, yeah, the, the the one with no the one with uh, the Quaith because people were talking about if it's if it's uh, hallucinations or what. But no, I I think it's a uh, it's um, John and Danny's uh, daughter Janny. Who's uh, come back from future? <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay, no, that one is just uh, <laughs> the one so, yeah, where she's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you keep on believing that. <laughs> That's your only probably... issue with that theory. Yeah. Everything else okay. is completely sound. He probably feels yeah. some spells. Really consistent. Mm. Okay, I can tell else? you which one I hate. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, Leanna plus Rhaegar equals Danny. Oh, I, yeah. I will yeah. fight that. Forever. No, fight. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. It's okay, yeah. you guys don't get it. Gonna... Where is Scott when I need him? <laughs> yes. so Avenge me, time. Scott. I I, I reject so your reality and substitute it with my own. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying I've I've spent so much time arguing against it with Scott. It's I'm actually very really tired of it. Oh yeah, I remember. I think it's because it's too episode. awesome. It just blows your mind. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm yeah. not into it either. But the biggest thing I, I like know. about it is that it's not the obvious thing. I just I'm because so it's over not it. Possible. It's like Jay. That's it's, true. It's yeah, a, I can get on board with that. God. You know what? Unless I don't you, like that. I'm just though. saying. If it, it, if that's true, what the f is the point of? Uh, oh, the mystery! It's stupid. I don't like it. But but it, but but you're really on on deep water when you when you you agree with Preston Jacobs. I mean, I'm just, just I'm just saying that's that's a red signal right there. I don't. <laughs> that is also a good that point. That is also a very good theory. Point. Well, you no, know, because even even before I um had heard about R plus L equals D. I kept thinking um, that R plus L equals J was just a little too easy and that there would definitely be more to it or why drag it out the way that he does. I just... Because because it's a very informing moment for all the characters. I mean, <laughs> if they knew what, what that, if John knew that, he would have done everything very differently. I also saw... I mean, oh, so that's that's the main reason because all the characters would have acted very differently if they knew John was actually that. Yeah, I know, but uh, George doesn't write the book for the characters; he's writing it for the reader. Sure, and I also it's like I, why be, do that? Yeah. To the I I agree with you, Hannah, but but it's... I also think maybe we don't have a clear sense of how obvious things are anymore because we've been looking at these books for a really long yeah. time and in a lot of detail. And if you read all yeah, seven maybe. or eight or probably nine of them once they're all published from start to finish without sure. knowing anything and without going as deeply into them, maybe it's just not that obvious. Also, well, I, I would, I, I would I add also... I think it, it isn't that obvious because there is that point where Kat says something about a shard Dane and then Ned says, never ask me about John's mother. Again. It's not like... And I just... Yeah, I think there's like more to it control. than R plus L equals J, is all I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm just... And I, I kind of hope the, there is, because I'd like another twist. I like the twists. That's one thing I like about these books. Hmm. But, but uh, to get back to the point where you said that George writes, writes it for the readers, and uh, yes, I agree that he writes it for the readers, but he also maintains his point of uh, only showing what the characters know. So uh, for the reason, simple reason that no one's left that actually knows it except for uh, uh, the Lord Reed, uh, the Howland Reed, uh, that's kind of one of the reasons. But so so he can't, unless he wants to like give us that tidbit and then then keep on getting making everyone act a certain way and us just like say oh my god why aren't you just why don't these people know that why why don't they act this way because yeah i think it's just because it, it makes more sense to to keep it hidden until someone in the books actually learns the truth um uh, so yeah, that's my point. So do you think we'll meet uh, Howlin' Reed in either Winds or Dream of Spring? Can we, can we better if we ever get those books? Talk, please. I think it's funny how we keep coming back to when are we going to see Howlin' Reed. <laughs> we think about yeah. that every episode and we're no closer to finding the truth. Yeah. No. We need him in our lives. Gotta wait for the next one. Yeah. So anyone Prologue, else maybe. to think of? Hmm? Um... I just I just think that maybe the most emblematic theory that uh, was ever uh, mentioned or uh, first thought of in the reread is probably the moon dragons. Yeah. If that's yes! actually a theory. I was <laughs> but I mean we're mentioning it. 
Yeah, yeah, we're mentioning it, mentioning it uh, all the time. <laughs> like to me, Moon is that from this? Okay. No. Yeah, it is. The nipple it was when you listen to it. Like it, it makes complete sense. I, I, it wasn't from I, I these, really don't. Dance reread. Yeah. Sorry? No, 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 it's from it's from the linear, but I really don't yeah, like it, like, personally. It's like really the second or third episode, episode. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's it's really early. It's like third or something, weird. Yeah, really? but yeah, it's... Yeah, it's that was so much fun that. to be on while he was describing it, and he's like, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> let, me, let me finish describing Because <laughs> it's like, the dragons came from the moon, and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> he's like, wait, wait. <laughs> Yeah, I still don't uh, like it, it's... even though I heard it. I don't. I don't. That's one, I'm not one sure the... I like the theory. It's just, it's just the way he was. I mean, the way White Raven, White Raven was going on about it <laughs> was just. He actually thought it through, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it's not the most ridiculous theory I've had. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't. No, definitely that, that 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 I can agree upon. It's not the most ridiculous one, but I just still don't like it as a, as That's a theory. Fair. <laughs> but this is very much be okay to me. Yeah. I'm not sure I would even call it a theory, it's just a be okay. Headcanon. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Okay, or so now. next thing is favorite episode that you were on, or just, you know, maybe you weren't on it and you enjoyed it. Can I go first? Yes. Yeah, sure. My favorite, my favorite episode had to be the Iron Bidet. My face Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, like, my face hurt from laughing so hard. And it was just great. I could listen to that after show, like, if I'm feeling shitty, like, oh, Trump won the election? I'll listen to Iron Bidet after show. Like, oh That's my like god. It's just so good. That's like a classic after show. Anyone I else? like, um, probably the favorite, my favorite one that I was on was uh, Medieval Vagina. Those two are definitely oh, yeah, my favorite. Oh yeah, that's definitely mine too. It's like for me, it's between those two. Those were the most fun. Yeah, yeah mine is apparently I, no, the like vagina. The, the few minutes was, I was up. Oh. Huh? Enlightening. Yeah. Go, Matt. I was gonna say apparently I missed a lot. Like from the couple minutes I was on that episode. <laughs> like, yeah. I missed a ton. My I well, one thing I love like when I'm on them or just listening to them is how you randomly pop in <laughs> on different episodes. While you're running. And it's usually, yes, that's amazing. It's usually <laughs> what the fuck did I just walk into? <laughs> it's just like so what, you was amazing it, timing. <laughs> was it you, Hannah, or uh, Miha in the Christmas episode who said, oh, a random mat appears, and I thought that was just <laughs> such a VOK thing to say. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. It's probably Miha. <laughs> well, sometimes, like, they're scheduled for, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I can't, like, you know, people work. Jesus, guys. <laughs> So I no, in there when was I... also an episode where you were at work, and uh, um, Bina was like, okay, and Matt seems to be just saying things that will work in real life and on the podcast, and you come back and you're like, that's correct, and I just kept wanting <laughs> you to, like, be doing that the whole time. Hey, it takes time. It, takes time. it was just awesome. But the Iron Bidet is, like... So awesome. So funny. But I also think the medieval vagina was absolutely unique. So. It was. I, yeah. I, I also yeah, love, I uh, don't know like anything hats. else like it. Yeah, the, the medieval vagina was, was probably the best. Um, of those I've been on, I don't know. Um, the first was really special. Uh, yeah. Because it was the first one. But. I really laughed. Uh, I, I laughed a lot, uh, like the the last one we did, with the one that's that's not out yet. But I think it's because I'm starting to uh, be more and more, more and more comfortable with you guys. So oh, really I'm good. getting the jokes uh, more easily, and 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 I'm I'm yeah. So uh, it's it's really fun. Well, there was there was some good jokes from everyone on that last one. 
I'm just we just randomly Everyone plugging really? that one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not just me for once. Uh, oh my god, were any of you guys there? Uh, was anybody on the episode where uh, somebody brought up like? This weird documentary about like competitive tickling. Yeah, that was probably me. Oh my god, that was so <laughs> funny. That was like one of it was one of my first ones and it was one of my favorite like things that ever happened to me ever. Yeah, I was so dying. another episode like, I that like a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> another episode that like me being uh, Greg, a bunch of us listened to is a uh, dollop, which is a comedian. Um, uh, thing where they just go through like weird American history, and they had an uh, episode on competitive tickling. I think it's like episode like three or four of their like entire canon. Listen to it, everyone. It's it's hilarious and very Can you very put a strange. Link? I will eventually. What um do you think though is the best episode as far as like serious analysis of the books? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Because <laughs> I liked the one we did on the Blackwater. Yeah, I think we did a lot of what-ifs in that chapter, which was very interesting. Yeah. I think Patrick and I just spent a lot of time discussing why Stannis didn't do certain things, like didn't ally with certain people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's kind of also troop movements. Yeah. And House yeah, of the House Undying was very House good. House of the Undying, yeah, exactly. We mm. got very in-depth in that chapter. I also yeah, like, we had one uh, where we talked really in-depth about Theon. I think it might have been when he takes Winterfell. And we talked Theon about like his psyche more. Yeah. Was I on that one? That sounds familiar. I think so, yeah. Oh, and just, by the way, my talking points are all done, so unless you guys have something, you really need to discuss. I think I have one more. Yeah. So, with a linear reread, I, I feel like a lot of VOKs that I'm on, I'm talking to mostly guys. And, like, maybe Bina, or maybe Amber's, like, lurking. But I feel like the linear reread episodes are, have a lot more like diversity as far as male to females, and including today, like we're at, where I think we're three and three or three and four. Yeah, I think that's true. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Um, that's good. How does that make you feel? <laughs> oh, fine. No, but I know there's like. Molly well, hates women. I think there's like. <laughs> yes, yeah, masculinity is threatened. <laughs> Um, no, I, no think I, mean, yeah, I think there's some discussion that, like, when we're doing, like, dragon cast, like, it was all guys. And, like, a couple other things was just, like, all guys. It's, like, where, do, you know, you can't find one girl to join you podcasting. And the linear reread has been a lot better diversified like that. Yeah. When do you guys normally do <laughs> dragon cast? Do you do it the night of? No, we usually do it like the. I think we, at one point we we're There's, one season we we're doing night. it the Monday after, and I think last season we we're doing it the Wednesday after the episode. Yeah, um, yeah, I think. Sorry, I think the linear reread we do mostly on weekends, so it's just possible for more people to join in. Yeah. Mm. Whereas I mean, other yeah. ones you just have like weekday nights or something, which is not not that easy. People should ar arrange their schedules around my schedule. Is that too much to ask? Yes. Oh. Yes, it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is definitely too much to ask. Well, fine. Now I know where we stand. You, but you should, you should have known this before. I mean, even <laughs> even the, the, the matriarch of the podcast is from, from Britain. Uh, I mean, yeah. everything, everything should have revolved around Bean to begin with, right? That is entirely true. Can you still... tell me who do you think does the best chapter summaries? Oh, oh that's mean. Oh. That's difficult. Wargasm is pretty good. Wargasm. Wargasm. Yeah. Wargasm yep. Okay, that's the correct answer. 
<laughs> Small Paul has good ones too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Paul does them good. I agree. I bumble and meander my way through a chapter. I don't do good ones. Yeah. I always liked though that whenever Bina was was the the host, the main host, she always uh, gifted you with the laughter, even though you weren't funny. Like <laughs> oh, that was great. Very cool. Uh, that was so so sweet. What makes yeah, it a it's, chapter it's, summary? It has yes, to be funny and insightful. laughter from it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, yeah, Paul's a really good because he's a very good writer, but he's also got a great sense of humor. Hmm. Yeah, I also think that really good at, at sometimes like mixing everything together. The only time I personally feel like the chapter summaries or a summary in general uh, works for me with with the humor is when when. Uh, like in it, with the wolf cast, uh, for me it was like really the way when when you have a beef with the with the chapter essentially that's when I feel right. like you can feel the reader has a beef with the chapter <laughs> yeah. with the episode. That's when when you know that it's funny. For, so for for me, I I can't really as I'm I'm really neutral on a lot of these chapters. So so unless we get to your and Greyjoy soon, uh, I I won't have that flame burning within me uh but i, I did that for the uh um uh, for the for the wolf cast with the show because that really pissed me off sometimes uh so that's when i made my base my best ones if i have to say myself uh mm. but now i can't because it's not like nothing's really that also because i've read it so many times it's not like my first time <laughs> so so everything's like yes i know this is happening it doesn't affect me the same way as it did the first two times I read this. Yeah, but I, I feel like like what you said, like having a beef with a chapter, like the more times you read it, the more like little stupid things will fucking nitpick your brain. And you just have to, and those are the things that kind of bring out laughs because it's like something that kind of bothered you the first time or like that wasn't written well or wasn't presented like in a way that made sense to you. And then like you read it again and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, the, uh, it's when you present something and the ones who are listening, the, us as listeners, we can recognize the the annoyance, but maybe not to the certain to that extent as as that you the the the, the one who made makes this summary it burns with hatred towards this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there yeah, is like old things where you really like. Oh my God! I mean, I'm, I'm not referencing uh, Tanya at any point in this specifically, but, <laughs> I was but about to, hatred so. towards a something <laughs> specifically so fervently that that everyone, one else, yeah, maybe they can see, yeah, this 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 kind of stupid, but they, but that you feel so much for it, that's what makes it enjoyable. 